What's up everybody, welcome to another video and I hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. My spring semester has officially been over for about a week now and I've just kind of been relaxing, haven't been really doing much math, been taking a little bit of a break, but it finished up pretty smoothly. Finals week went well, I got good grades, so considering the circumstances, things went pretty well and I hope y'all had a similar experience as well. So since I've been taking sort of a break, I'm not going to directly do any math in this video, but I'm going to talk about something that I think is pretty interesting, which is the fact that a lot of times when we pursue things that we're passionate about, pursuing and doing those things changes our perspective just on life in general, right? And it benefits us in ways that maybe aren't directly related to whatever it is we're doing. So that's what I'm going to kind of talk about in this video is how studying math has benefited my life and sort of changed my perspective. And a similar thing happened to me as well when I was pursuing fitness and working as a personal trainer. I saw an effect in other areas of my life as well. So I think it's a pretty interesting thing to look at and talk about. But first, I just want to mention the beard is not this new look I'm trying out. I just don't see the point in shaving until I can get a decent haircut. So until then, I'm rocking the hat and the beard. So I'm sorry if I look homeless. It is what it is. This is the situation. So first thing I want to mention and how math has benefited me the most, and this is I think probably the biggest thing that most of us get from studying math, right? The biggest benefit is the fact that I have a lot of confidence when it comes to solving problems and learning skills, right? Because at the end of the day, math is a skill and it's a skill that's difficult for a lot of people to learn, including me. Right? So what it takes to learn a difficult skill are qualities such as you know, discipline, self-awareness, patience, you know, good work ethic, all those things that can easily be applied to solve other problems and learn other skills. Those are the basic principles I use to accomplish fitness goals. Right now I'm trying to get better and better at playing guitar and those are the same principles I'm applying to improve at guitar. So it's just this general confidence in like, I can look at a problem and I can figure out a way to solve it, maybe not immediately, but eventually. And it's just sort of that, I guess tenacity is a good word, right? Being willing to like accept challenges and being willing to learn new things that are difficult. And this is often how I answer students when they ask me, when am I gonna ever use this in real life? Often what I tell them is, well, maybe this exact math concept you won't use in real life, but there are going to be plenty of times in your life you're going to be presented a problem that you're not immediately going to know how to solve, or you're going to be told to learn something that looks very difficult to learn, and you're going to have to figure out how to persevere through that. So this is great practice, and I think that's what studying math, I think that's kind of one of the biggest sort of underlying benefits from studying math. So now I'll talk a little bit about how studying math has changed my thinking. And the first and the most obvious thing I've noticed is that it's made me more of a skeptic. And this may sound like a bad thing. The word skeptic kind of has this like negative vibe to it, but I actually think it's a good thing. And I'll explain why in a second. But I think where this comes from is the fact that when I take math classes, especially proof-based courses, when I'm shown, you know, propositions, theorems, statements, these sort of things, a lot of times it's not immediately obvious that that statement is true, right? And one of the first things I try to do is understand why it's true and convince myself that it's true. And often that requires time outside of class, drawing out pictures, writing out examples, thinking, you know, doing research. It's a process, but eventually I get to the point where it becomes intuitive why a theorem or statement is true, right? So that process is similar to what I kind of do in my day-to-day -day life as well. When I hear people say things or make some kind of claim, I don't immediately buy into it, right? I make sure to go and do my research before I fully am convinced that that is true. And it's not that I don't trust the person, right? But it's just that I want to be convinced, especially if I'm gonna go and repeat it to other people. And this is something that I see a lot of people do. A lot of people really don't do their research. They hear things from friends and family or they see things on the news and they go and repeat them. And even news stations have done this where they've published articles or they've done like a segment on their show and then later had to come out and be like, actually, that wasn't completely true. We had the story wrong because we didn't fully do our research. So I never want to be in that position where I'm repeating things that aren't true. And especially coming from a math perspective, that's probably one of the worst things you can do 
in math, especially as a mathematician, is say something as if it's true, when in reality, it's not. It's a big no-no in the math world. So that's just one thing that I've noticed, kind of how my perspective has changed a little bit. So another thing I've noticed is that my experience with math has better allowed me to differentiate and also made me more aware of what kind of statements are objective facts and what kind of statements are opinions. And of course, the foundation of math is logic. And so we, when we learn about logic, we learn about propositions. And these are essentially statements that are either true or false, right? So if a proposition is not false, then it's true. If it's not true, it's false. They are either true or false. They can't be both and they can't be neither, okay? So my experience with learning about just even basic logic has sort of carried over into this awareness in day-to-day -day life. And what I've noticed is what a lot of people do is they state things as if they're facts when in reality they aren't even propositions, meaning they can't objectively be given a true or false value. Hopefully that's making sense. And I'll give a clear example if it doesn't make sense. So I made a video a while back and it's actually the only skit video I've ever made, but it's something about math major struggles and in the video, I do this kind of little bit where I talk about how my experience in Calculus 2 was that a lot of people were telling me, wait till Cal 3, it's going to get a lot easier. And then I got to Cal 3 and I thought it was a lot harder. That was my experience. So I made a little joke about it. And then someone, of course, commented and said, actually, Cal 2 is way easier, right? So stating this as if it's a fact when in reality, this is completely subjective. It depends on the person, it depends on the teacher, it depends on the class, it depends on just a lot of different factors, and we can't objectively say whether Cal 2 is harder than Cal 3. And this is just an, an example, and it's kind of silly. I'm not like mad at this comment or anything, but it's something that I've noticed a lot of people doing is stating things like this that we can't really determine whether they're true or false because there are so many different factors but stating them as if they're true or as if they're false, right? So it's just something that I've kind of been aware of and I've also made sure that I don't do this myself. So when I say things like this, I always preface it with like, in my opinion or based on my experience, right? And I make sure to include phrases like that when I say these things to make it clear that, hey, I'm not saying this is true in general, I'm just saying this is my opinion or this is based on my experience. I feel like if other people did that, it would just be better. I don't know, whatever. So these are the last couple of things I could come up with, but it's sort of two things tied into one. Hopefully you'll see what I mean. So in general, my experience with studying math has allowed me to just look at things more logically and objectively, right? In all areas of my life. So often there will be some kind of an issue and what happens is there's like four different claims being made about a particular issue. And all of those claims contradict each other, right? They're all different. So what I often do, being a skeptic, like I mentioned before, I don't get sold on one idea. I go and I do my research and I look into all of these different claims. And what I often find is that you could make a pretty good argument for all four of these claims. Even though they all contradict each other, I see pretty good arguments being made. And this often leaves me in a place of like, being a little bit indecisive and just saying, I don't know, I could see an argument for all four of these things, which maybe you could look at as a negative thing because I'm not, you know, picking a side. But I personally think this is a positive thing because it mostly comes from a place of like humility and understanding that like, hey, these arguments are being made. I don't have shit figured out. What the hell do I know? It is what it is. And I think that's a lot better than the opposite of extreme, which is to jump into one argument and one claim and just sort of zoom into one particular way of thinking and not even consider other ways of thinking or other opinions, right? Which is unfortunately what I see a lot of people do today. And this sort of ties into the second part of this sort of area, which is that I'm a lot more able today than I was in the past before studying math to have just rational arguments and debates and conversations and that sort of thing. I'm able to hear people out when they making some kind of a claim that I disagree with. I'm able to rationally disagree with them, present counterpoints, and we can have a discussion, and we can disagree, and it's all normal. It's not crazy. It's not hateful, which is often what you see, especially on the internet. There are no rational arguments on the internet. We all know this. They're all just, you know, cussing and yelling and that sort of thing. And I think studying math has made me more willing, able, 
and open-minded to like disagree about things and have a discussion and maybe reach some kind of resolution or maybe not. Either way, it's all good, right? So I think that's a pretty good benefit as well. I think a lot of people could learn from being able to have some rational discussions and debates. I like to see it a lot more because uh, I think it's pretty fun to, to debate things and to you know counter each other and that sort of thing. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen on the internet, so I don't even bother trying. But I think that's about it. That's what I can come up with. Maybe I'll relate it to some of this stuff. If you did, let me know in the comments below. If math has changed your perspective or benefited you in other ways as well that I missed in this video, leave them below. I'm curious to hear y'all's experience. I'm planning out some videos, gonna do some Delta Epsilon proofs soon, some other proofs, uh, lots of stuff coming this summer. Stay tuned. Thanks for supporting me. Thanks for watching. Keep flexing those brain muscles and I'll see y'all later.